very good morning children today's topic is control of conception that is contraception now we have already dealt with conception in pregnancy what we were trying to tell you is how the egg and the sperm has to come together to give rise to a zygote and ultimately a fetus and a mature baby now we come to the opposite of that what is it to prevent the meeting of the sperm and the egg so that no zygote or no baby nothing is formed so we are trying to make less babies now what are the main aims why do we need to have this thing contraception and something which is shown on the top is family planning and contraception so contraception is part of a family planning why do we need to plan the family there are number of reasons one of course is very big factor is economy and with this as you all know our population is going into millions and billions and i don't have a clue to how much they are going to go up to but there has to be some sort of a restriction otherwise the resources will be depleted resources can be nature resources can be fear resources can be money whatever it is so we need to regulate the number or the population level so to start with the learning objectives are one is introduction so why we won't need to have a family planning why we need to have a contraception what is the benefits of family planning what are the methods of family planning then there are certain eligibility criteria for contraceptive use termination of pregnancy and we can summarize the whole thing so to summarize the whole issue need for contraception one is to restrict the population which is increasing by leaps and bounds one reason why population is increasing is because we have prevented some of the causes of death so there is a decrease in death rate increase in population will have a negative effect on the available resources then more the number of children more it sort of hampers the health of the mother and the family as a whole as well as the child considering all this it is a national issue which has to be addressed by instituting national programs of birth control and there has to be both education and motivation at all levels change in belief so that people can understand the importance of having a small family and to be able to fulfill their needs so contraception by definition includes all the methods temporary and permanent which prevent pregnancy after a sexual and family planning is a practice which is intended to enable a couple to have desired number of children with proper spacing so one thing is that we have certain temporary measures and have certain permanent measures there are conditions where we need a temporary block to the conception sometimes we can do it permanently so considering this we have methods which are spacing methods and methods which are terminal when do we want to space we want to space one thing is when after marriage you want to prevent conception for some time or the couple already have a child so they want to have the other one after some time 
So this is called as methods of and the terminal methods is when the family is completed. Then we have terminal methods. Now in the spacing methods, these are methods where we are wanting to space out either after marriage or after one child or after two child. These are natural methods. They could be barrier methods, they could be intrauterine devices, hormonal contraceptives, emergency contraception, post-conception methods. So these are all things which are temporary in nature. Terminal or permanent methods are either male sterilization, it is a surgical thing, or female sterilization. Both are surgical options. Now coming to the natural contraceptive methods. Now what is this calendar based methods or symptom based methods? Either we know the day of ovulation, that is 14 days before the next menstrual cycle, or we can go on symptom based, that is either depend on the cervical secretion or basal body temperature. You over, this ovulation is usually taking place on the 14th day of the cycle. Now after ovulation it remains sort of there till 48 hours, but it is more viable in the first 24, 48 hours. So somehow we have to prevent having sexual contact during this period which is actually the dangerous period. Two days before, three days before and three days after, so about one week period, we try to avoid because this is the dangerous period. More chances, dangerous in the sense, more chance of uh, pregnancy. So this is the period when we, uh, in case of infertile people, people who don't have children, we will tell them to have sex. So it is the fertile period. And for those who want to have contraception, we try to tell them to avoid this period. This is the high fertility period. The next is withdrawal or quietus interruptus. During physical contact, the male organ is removed from the vaginal tract during ejaculation. Abstinence, not having sex. And lactational amenorrhea. This is something we discussed in lactation that due to excess of prolactin there is some hormonal changes in estrogen and progesterone. So during that period ovulation is suppressed. Though it is not a hundred percent proof that if the baby is on lactation there will not be any pregnancy but it is fairly a natural spacing method. the barrier methods. Barrier method means we are not allowing the egg and the sperm to meet. So we are putting up a barrier. Now this you can see all barriers being put up to prevent the coronavirus infection. Barriers. A mask is a barrier. Similarly we are putting up in physical barriers and this is male condoms or female condoms, diaphragm, cap, then we have chemical barriers. These are, you can say, substances which are lethal to the sperm. Forms, jellies, creams, suppositories. And sometimes you can use both to make it more effective. So combined barrier methods. Barrier methods of contraception prevent the transport of the sperm to the ovum, number one. It can immobilize the sperm or it also can be lethal against the sperm. One such substance is non oxinol which is called S to D. Coming to the intrauterine contraceptive device, IUCD or IUDs. Now what are these? We are inserting certain devices into the uterine cavity so that to prevent pregnancy. And depending on their development, first there were first generation um, IUDs which were lipids loop. No biologically active agent was there. 
second generation we had certain substances on it like copper so we named it copper tea multi load copper and something like that copper 200 380 and third generation was instead of this metal we put in hormones so one thing is that we have seen that if the hormone estrogen progesterone is sort of changed ovulation or fertility or whatever it is gets hampered so these are flexible devices intrauterine contraceptive device it could be if you're putting some metal it could be contraceptive system if you're putting some hormones on that it is inserted into the uterus pregnancy so it could interfere with the passing of the <coughs> passage of sperm to the up to the ovum interfere with the ovum to reach the uterine cavity it can thicken the cervical mucus and change endometrial lining so these are various methods how I at present the most widely accepted view is that the iucd causes a number one a foreign body reaction so if there is a foreign body reaction there will be certain cellular and biochemical changes within the uterus which becomes non conducive for implantation and it it is believed that it changes the viability of the gametes also because it has to pass through uterus and fallopian tube and up over there so this changes the viability of the gamete and reduces the chances of fertilization rather than implantation so accordingly we have non medicated loops like if you call lipids loop medicated copper tea 200 380 multi load copper then we have progesta search so the name suggests it is progesterone mechanism of action is if it is non medicated then it leads to a foreign body reaction produces a sterile inflammatory response which is spermicide if it is copper iodide it leads to a foreign body reaction and induces alteration in cervical mucus one thing we have seen is the cervical mucus has to be thin and elastic endometrial secretion and initiate release of cytokine peptides which may be cytotoxic the hormonal containing iodides they suppress the endometrium leading to atrophy endometrium is not um, made up to receive the zygote and it thickens the cervical mucus so here is the summary of the, all the mechanisms mechanical methods of bad of contraception coming to the hormonal or chemical contraception these are use of estrogen and progesterone preparations it could be oral you like pills or it could be non oral like injectable iud's implants rings patches three types of oral contraceptives for women are available one is a combination estrogen and progesterone throughout the menstrual cycle constant doses or their combination in which the progesterone estrogen are changed or there can be only progesterone preparations the mode of action of this oral contraceptive is that estrogen inhibits secretion of follicle stimulating hormone so if the follicle stimulating hormone is missing the graphene follicle doesn't develop so there is no ovulation on the other hand progesterone inhibits secretion of luteinizing hormone so prevents ovulation also make the cervical mucus less receptive for the sperm estrogen and progesterone also acting together to prepare the endometrium normally first the estrogen will relax and then the progesterone will act so as to make it uh, prepared for the zygote to implant this is all done so they may also interfere with the coordinated contraction of the cervix uterus fallopian tubes which facilitate fertilization and contractions may also be hampered but there is one problem not one problem but a few problems out of which more important are the cardiovascular side effects and carcinogenic side effects in these pills so usually it is not given to patients with cardiovascular problems or to people who have a past history of cancer so these are a list of things or contraindications where we are not to give these pills or prescribe these pills so it could be thromboembolic disorders in in total cardiovascular disorders migraine uncontrolled hypertension major surgery which requires prolonged immobilization smoking and breast cancer 
So these are the different methods of hormonal preparation, pills, rings, patches, implants, IUDs. This we have already mentioned. So you can see the pills, you can see the implant, ring, patches. Then emergency contraception is morning after pill. You take a double dose of the pill and 12 hours later again you take another two tablets. So that prevents implantation. So this is a method where you think that there has been a physical contact and you have not used any other uh, way of uh, contraception or you have forgotten to take the pills, then this is one method which might prevent pregnancy. Male contraceptives, there are certain sub things that we on the list as such, male pill, gossip ball, then hormonal preparation, testosterone, testosterone, dianazole, cyprotestone, acetate, calcium channel blocker. So these are certain things which can decrease the you can say the effectivity of a sperm. But besides condom and withdrawal and maintaining the safe period on a natural method, there is hardly any uh, method of spacing for males. These are certain things, battery powered capsule and then uh, involve heating a man's testicle and all that stuff is not something which can be doable. One thing under trial was Vassar gel. It was a gel which is put inside the this thing, uh, vas difference, and when it sort of solidifies, it doesn't allow the sperms to pass. RISUG, reversible inhibition of sperm under guidance. This was done at Kharagpur IIT by Dr. Suja Kumar Goha, and this sort of changes the. Uh, negative charge of the sperm, so it gets killed or it gets destroyed. They start to make it more smart by putting in some copper or iron oxide particles so that it becomes uh, magnetic. So you can see where it is going. Permanent method of contraception are the sterilization or surgical methods. This is usually permanent though there are trials, not trials exactly, there are times when people want to undo that sterilization operation but the results are not very good. Surgical methods of contraception, these methods permanently prevent conception by involving surgical manipulation of the reproductive organs. Tubal ligation, tying up the fallopian tube, hysterectomy, removing the uterus, and vasectomy, the vas difference is tied. So tubectomy in females is permanent contraception to block or cut the fallopian tubes. If the fallopian tube is cut, then egg will never meet the sperm, 99% effective. It's an informed choice. So this is the area from where it is showing the fallopian tubes, where it is taken out, either clipped or you put a plastic band or you cut it and cauterize it, or you can, you can use a clip. Vasectomy in males is a permanent contraception to block or cut the vas that carry the sperm from testicles to the exterior. Keep sperms out of each other. So semen can go, but sperms are not there. 99% effective after 3 months of semen evaluation. Does not affect male sexual performance and voluntary informed choices. So this is where you are removed, taking the, you are cutting over the skin, taking out the vas difference and again either uh, cutting it off and sealing it or you can block it or you can cauterize it. But in spite of using also all this sort of contraception, there are chances that it might fail. Then what? Then we come to post-conception methods which is called as Medical Termination of Pregnancy Act 1971. Why did this have, have to be made an uh, act? Because people were going to quacks to clear the pregnancy, abort the baby and in the process they used to use such unhygienic or unscientific methods that it led to other complications and then they were brought to the hospital. So they made it mandatory of that you allow, the government now allows it to that you can abort a fetus if you don't want it. 
Now, what are the indications of medical termination of pregnancy? Indications are medical, any medical emergency to the mother. Eugenic, that is something risky to the child, some genetic problems. Humanitarian ground, when pregnancy is a result of rape and failure of contraceptive methods. Medical termination of pregnancy, the methods are dilatation and curettage, DNC is what we call them. You dilate the cervix and remove the products of conception. Same thing you can do, vacuum, you, you can use a vacuum to aspirate out the conceptors. Or you can administer prostaglandins. Prostaglandins cause contraction of the uterus. The MTP Act, where can you do this in medical termination of pregnancy? It has to be a hospital established or maintained by government or a place approved by the district level committee. Who can perform MTP? A registered medical practitioner who has an experience or training in gynae and ops as prescribed by rules made under the Act. When can the pregnancies be terminated? Where the length of the pregnancy does not exceed 12 weeks, then we can do a medical termination of pregnancy. Where the length of pregnancy exceeds 12 weeks but does not exceed 20 weeks and the continuation of pregnancy may be risky to the woman's life or risky to the child, then you can do it even after 20 weeks. No pregnancy of a woman who has not attained the age of 18 years or a woman of 18 years but mentally ill will be terminated unless there is a written consent by the guardian. So you have to have consent. Below age, you have to have consent. So MTP rules, training work that is required is a practitioner who holds a postgraduate degree, so no problem. A diploma degree, no problem has done a six months house job or a practitioner who has at least one year of practice of these uh, use of upstanding has worked in the department. A practitioner registered in state medical register immediately before the commencement of that experience in practice of obstetrics and gynecology for a period not less than three years. So these are certain rules that have been laid out who can do a MTP. Now one more issue is social motivation. Education and sensitization of the couple, that is that it is a right of both the mother and the father to decide on the issue of, issue of contraception. Apart from that, the extended family, the in-laws, the members of that religion or society, they also have certain things, preset ideas in their mind which have to be taken into account and motivate these people or educate these people to understand the economic viability and the depletion of resources. So the benefits of contraception and family planning are that it reduces the need for unsafe abortions, it also prevents sexually transmitted disorders, it reinforces people's right to determine the number of children they want to have after how many years they want to have it and it also prevents unwanted maternal and fetal deaths. So in summary, the need for contraception is a population control, maternal risk, risk of the baby, it could be sexually transmitted disease and humanitarian issues like rape. Methods of contraception, physical, mechanical, chemical, spills, IUDs, surgical methods. So you can see all the birth control methods in one picture, whether mechanical or chemical or surgical or IUDs. A few short notes which you might get on this topic is contraceptive pills or safe period or lactation lemuria. So some of these questions you can uh, make notes on them. And if there are any issues in these uh, presentations, you can get back to us. Thank you.